he also, we got this for him maybe about two years ago. We got an app for him on his, on his, on his, on his yeah, exactly, on his iPad where he can, you know, go through various biblical mm -hmm. references, uh, names, um, ideas. Just to jog the memory and, and he actually, exercises for the yeah, brain. As a Presbyterian minister, he enjoys it. So as he goes through it, he will say, ah, Babel. This is why it's important. This is where it came from in the Bible. Mm. Every single word he'll explain out yes. loud, and he knows. So again, dementia takes a lot of things away, mm. but some things can never be taken away. Mm. So he goes through, and he'll go through every single word, and he'll go from easy to medium to, to more difficult, and he does it three times a day. Yeah. That's part of his sort of daily... Yeah process and he loves it that's He's what he does giving me a, uh, some mini sermons on our walk earlier yeah are you a christian yeah. and he was like teaching yep. me some things can you talk talk a little bit about um kind of bullet point your trajectory of your dad's kind of career sure yeah so uh my dad um went to uh, sf state uh and he graduated and then he wanted to become a minister after that so he went to uh, seminary, Fuller Seminary in Pasadena, California. Mm -hmm. And when he went to True Light Presbyterian in Southern California, that's where he said, ooh, look at that lady over there. Look at that lady. <laughs> he told me this story. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he said it that way. No. He said, look at that lady. You know. <laughs> yes, no, but he, saw, he saw my mom. <laughs> yep, he saw my mom. And um, then they started dating when he was at Fuller Seminary. When he graduated, they moved up here, got married. Uh, lived with uh, his his parents, had two kids, and then before I was born, moved into this house. And then I was born, then my sister after that. In his career, he was a youth minister at Cumberland Presbyterian Church in Chinatown, San Francisco. It's the church he grew up in. It's the church he still goes to today. Wow. It's an important part of his support group. They have watched Stephen Louie as a young guy, as a middle-aged guy, as a guy that just mm -hmm. retired and now is going through dementia and they're still there for him. It's an important part mm -hmm. of that team we're talking yeah. about, right? Um, so he was at the church as a youth minister, could not support four children as a youth minister. He became a postman. And although he likes animals, I think in the back of his mind, he cannot forget those dogs that came after him. Because he got bit. He got oh. bit a couple times. Oh, okay. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he got bit. That's why I'm surprised. Like, yeah. That's why he likes pigeons. Yeah. Hello, pigeons. Because they can't bite them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so he did that. And then after that, he um, became a social worker uh, and then did that for like 25 years. So he's had a bunch of careers. The social work is actually, as I said earlier, is what has informed him, I think, to understand and be open about his frailties. Mm-hmm. Because what would have been more typical, I think, early on in his life, is that he would have probably said, which is more typical of somebody like him, being Asian American, Pacific Islander, is that we go, oh, we're not going to talk about that stuff. Yeah. But I think because of his job, mm. he, he, what he was saying to other people, yeah. he was internalizing. Mm. I fully believe that the energy you give out is you receive it tenfold. So I can definitely see that in, you know, in just being around your father. I think what's unique to your story is that you are a storyteller for a living and you're living out this no. part of your story no. that you probably never guessed that you would have to live out. That's mm -hmm. what happened with me too as a journalist. So you have a different lens on it that's very special and unique. But um, what are some things that you've learned that might yeah. be a light bulb or a life lesson for somebody else watching? It's a life lesson for me, and, and you know we all have our own personal lenses on life, yeah. and embrace it. Mm. Whether it's a day that might be perceived by some, or it's written by some to be X, it is Y to you. Mm. And if your Y has a little bit of that X in it, that's fine. What I mean to say is, you know, I, I am just saying this is this is part of what I've been given, and and I've I've been, I've been blessed to 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 go through this, mm. and to take it as that. And nothing comes, you know, as 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 as, as only sweet, right? Mm. And so for me, it's just head first, go at it, enjoy it, embrace it, uh, bring everything, bring everything for it. Mm. 
I love your positive attitude uh, because uh, it's very much like a spiritual, uh, modern day um, spiritual teacher, Eckhart Tolle. Are you familiar with him? Uh, one of his favorite, one of my favorite quotes is, it is what it is. And that's a spiritual lesson. It's like you learn that what has happened mm -hmm. has happened and it's how you react to it. Uh, on one of my Instagram posts, I recently posted a, a photo that um, uh, of uh, the Golden Gate Bridge and it said, and I just, I just came up in my mind. I was like, change um, your perspective, change your life. And, you know, you've been able to adapt. I mean, I think being a journalist, that helps a lot being... Um, from lineage or f of somebody like your father. Mm -hmm. um, and th that type of energy that he puts out, I think has also helped what? in your it journey so it much. It, and it is a, it's a muscle set. As I said, you know, like I almost flunked out of high school. I, I, I did not go to college out of high school. I, 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 I worked at Mrs. Fields Cookies for five years and then I went to City College of San Francisco. You know, uh, I am not fitting into that mold of that so-called model minority. And it's because the two of them said, let Richard fail. Mm. Let him figure it out. So hard to do that with someone. It is love. tough, but I'm number three, yeah. right? Um, so I'm lucky. By that time they got to, by the time yeah, they yeah. got to me, number five. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Let him journalism, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's part of it, right? Uh, and and that's the way I've sort of approached things. Like you know, when I switched careers from business to journalism at the age of 35, you're like, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. And, and, and you got this job and it's paying you how much and yeah. blah, 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 blah. Trust me, I know. <laughs> so, and, and, and that's why, you know, this house is, is important because it's not going to be easy. But our purpose now is to turn this into a place that they can be in. Mm -hmm. You know, the stairs, they cannot walk up and down. And yet we cannot move them or they cannot move mm -hmm. because if my father's moved to another location, mm -hmm. he will get lost. He will be yeah. unable to walk out in the street. Go down and get his donut and go down and get his sandwich and go to see the gum man, right? And get his, his chewing gum. It just won't happen. Yeah. And so that's why we've decided, okay, we need to remodel the place mm -hmm. so that they can live on one level mm -hmm. and stay at this place. So he can re keep his independence and his sense of what he loves to do. Mm. You can imagine if we moved even like a mile away. Yeah. Totally disoriented. Yeah. Stuck yeah. in the house. Yeah. And that's not what he wants yeah. and that's not what i think the family wants yeah. either yeah. so how do we help him live the way he wants to live mm. and exist the way he wants to exist mm. and so again you know that's it's a not an easy task we're pushing towards it and it's taking a long time but you know, that's part of making this happen that's a, that's you know trying to get four siblings to decide how to put together a plan how to go to di dinner is hard where yes. to go to dinner Thank is you. hard that's right <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Yeah, what to, to order on the yeah, menu. Yeah. But to, to put together a plan and to execute and to make sure that there's no ego involved and yeah. yada, yada, yada. So, and I respect all those views, yeah, by the way. I'm absolutely. not saying anybody has, is better or, yeah. No, because all four of highway. us are working on yeah. the right solution together. So what are some things that you would, you know, aside from the have your plan together type of thing, what are some things that um, you've learned that you think that people would benefit from um, if they're in the same, similar situation of having to be a caregiver? Mm. get help mm. don't be afraid to ask for help with no community. yeah, d yeah d just get help uh, and that's maybe that's a little bit too strong I would say go out and find the people that know to help you mm -hmm. you know it's a lot like in, uh, you gotta do taxes you go and sometimes get help from H&R yeah. Block or an mm -hmm. accountant and when you have a, a toothache yeah. uh, you're gonna go to a dentist you're not gonna go into the kitchen and say hey mom can you figure out my toothache yeah <laughs> you know right um, it's that sort of approach. Uh, and look, the, there's so many great resources today that weren't yeah. around 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we're lucky. Yeah. I mean, look, I've got no, I, I'm just like everybody else. And I, everybody else is doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. They find out this, this is happening. It, it's, it hurts in the beginning. Then you go out and you get help. You try to figure out what the right solutions are. It's not easy. You do it. And you, you try to get through to the next day and, and you smile. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's an honor, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is an honor to to be able to help and to help. Mm. 
you your dad is very proud of you uh, he told me a lot about you on our walk oh what do you say you, he says that you deserve a lot of donuts basically <laughs> he's like i love richard you know that's right why here. we got donuts right here to prove it right. but um he's like you know i love richard and i'm so glad i had four kids and you know they you know they came out of love yeah. you know and i and uh well sorry that's just my terrible yeah. impersonation i yeah. have really bad accents yeah. for people that know me yeah. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> but, um, you deserve all the donuts in the world because, um, you know, you're just a stellar example of um, just a great, not only human being, journalist, but all that, but um, it, I told the, the crew that I was like, you know, just being around Richard, I just feel like a better person. No. I feel smarter. No. So, um, every day, Joe. Every day, Joe. No. We can go through yeah. this. Yes. Yeah. Can... Let's do that. And, and doing this is like taking on a, a job. A very big job, and, yeah. and this is the book. Let's close it and then open it. That we're using yeah. right now. It's like a home care binder. Okay. It's got all of the things that need to happen, and times, and checklists, and you know, it is like any other project that you might undertake. Yeah. And um, what's great about my mom is that she is a very good project manager. <laughs> so this book, which has mm -hmm. the majority of what it, it requires for home care is what she takes care of. So that's a part of getting organized. And then this is what we just visited, um, a place where he could have a, an out-of-home program twice a week. Mm -hmm. and, you know, again, you're going there, you're gonna spend two hours, you're gonna, you're gonna watch to see if he's okay. Does he get along with the people? Yeah. Uh, because he needs his, he yeah. likes to socialize. Yeah. And, and like anybody, we're trying to think of, okay, what's gonna work well for him? Yeah. He does a YMCA once a week. How about going to this program for individuals that are in a similar situation as him yeah. and you know that takes time too but you know he enjoys it so these are just some of the things that we've gone through that i know a lot of others in our situation mm -hmm. have yeah having a sense of community or your own tribe and yeah. working as a unit yeah. is so important that yep. people don't you know uh, i think sometimes we we're taught to value make money yeah a big house whatever whatever buy things whatever but really at the end of the day it's like what experiences have you had with mm -hmm. each other mm -hmm. and have you connected and inspired and empowered other people to be better and do better so you know what we're looking for in these programs we're looking for a group of people that like to say a ya at very <laughs> high volumes <laughs> uh, and uh, we want to and we, the, the group also has to like to say what what <laughs> Yeah. They ha and they have to like pigeons. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They have to like pigeons. And donuts. And donuts. And stuff. Look, and, and, they'll, look, and gum. They'll all have fresh bread gum. after the donuts. And, and I laugh <laughs> and smile about this because, you know, our family does. And it's not that we're making fun of them. No. It's just that we are going along with him. Yeah. It's we are, endearing. Yeah. We go along because it is. it is. You're a character in his story. He is. He's, he, you know, so it's when I say these things, it's because we enjoy it. And we He's enjoying it. And why not? Why not? Yeah. We don't want to push it off as because we yeah. like when we were in the bus, you know, he's he's making those noises and he's offering gum to all these sorts of folk. And I'm sitting there just smiling because, you know, I, I know the other people are like some are. And then there are some that yeah. understand. Yes. And and for you as a caregiver, that's what you need to find. Is that mm. this is just for you and that person. Mm. There's gonna be a lot of other people hovering around when it comes to dementia and Alzheimer's. And if you want to live the life that they want to live, in this case, my father, mm -hmm. there are people that are looking and go, ooh. Yeah. But for me, I'm like, hmm, everything's just fine. Yeah. He's enjoying himself. Yeah. He's not hurting anybody. Yeah. Uh, and he's he's going along his way and he's smiling. And yeah, he's, he can scream with his, what? You know, a bit <laughs> too loud. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that might be. But at the end of the day, as a caregiver, it's, it's your connection mm -hmm. with that person yeah. that you are caring for. That's all that matters, right? Yeah. Does matters. not matter as long as they're not hurting anybody. Mm -hmm. and, and and I think that sort of, you know, just sitting there and he's sitting right by my side and I know what he's doing and I'm just smiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is yeah. kind of fun. It, and, and and I'll, you know, I, I'll, I'll come down and I'll laugh with my mother too. I was like, mom, that was pretty funny what you and dad just went through. Yeah. Isn't that really a big life lesson? I think well, a lesson that we all need to learn before we leave this earth is that, you know, when you be to your own tune, Nobody else like you out there. When you beat your own tune, you're most joyful, no matter what you're going through in life. <laughs> it's just, and your dad is out there beating to his own tune, loving the pigeons, and he's like, I love kids, you know, that's why I had, you know, four. And, you know, it's just uh, lovely and endearing to mm -hmm. be around because if you really pay attention, there's a lot of wisdom in, um, in those little moments we overlook daily, so. It's all learnings. Yeah.
All winners. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. You bet. Yeah, it's an honor, buddy. Oh, thank you, right. sir. Thank you. All right, buddy. Really appreciate you. Thank you.